This week's project, we're going to take one of our first ever built epoxy tables and we're going to compare it to the ways and methods we are currently building tables now. And you guys do want to stick around and watch the whole video because we got a really exciting giveaway that you don't want to miss. And you do want to stick around till the end to see how this beautiful masterpiece came out. So as we're going through this project, you will see there will be small pop-up videos that will appear. And this will basically show you either the old methods we are using that we are still currently using, or we found a better way in building epoxy tables. So this table we manufactured for one of our clients and they requested a frost smoky finish. And I'm going to show you how we done it. And as I'm going to do the explanation, I'm going to show you guys new ways, new tips and tricks and new methods we found in manufacturing epoxy tables. So obviously as time passed, we invested in better equipment. This was still our very first shop we started manufacturing tables from. And we obviously have a much better shop now. Starting off this project, this was one of the old methods we used in basically making our live edges a little bit darker. And if I could go back, we are not really using this method anymore because it depends on which color you're using. But once you start casting the epoxy, you don't really see the blackness. Building a mold for our epoxy. This is basically a straightforward step and we are currently still using the same methods because I believe you can't really change anything about building a mold. It's super easy. The wood we're using is called uh, white melamine and it's basically the best you can use to build a mold. What I'm busy doing now is just giving my wood a wipe and we're going to use our air hose to remove all the dust particles. Now this is a crucial step and we are still using the same methods to today because you don't want to cast your epoxy if there's going to be any dust particles on your wooden slab once you're going to place it into the mold. There's nothing fancy about this. Um, I do want to recommend if you guys are going to do a casting Make sure you clean your slab before you're going to place it into your mold. The next step in our project is also something we are still using to today and the same product. It's called Ram Wax. So we're basically applying this wax to the inside of our mold to make sure that once we're going to remove our epoxy table from our mold that the epoxy is not going to stick to the mold. We had this happen to us once before where we didn't apply enough wax and believe me removing that mold from your epoxy table is really really difficult. One thing we also did change is you can see the steel table I'm placing my slab on we invested in building a heavy duty steel table with some threaded rods underneath the table so we can adjust the table and make sure that we cast on a flat surface. Next step is we previously used the epoxy called Woodcast 30 and it's an epoxy that sets very quick. I mean like four to five hours you can start casting your next epoxy but that prevented us from removing most of the air bubbles in our epoxy so the new epoxy we're using is called crystal 100 it's a deep casting epoxy and this helps us to remove most of our air bubbles and to see the color of what your end product is going to look you need to use a transparent cup and put around about the same epoxy as you're planning to pour the thickness of your table then you're going to see your end result more or less once we mix our part a and our part b we will leave the batch for a few minutes then we would come with our gas torch to remove most of the air bubbles this is a crucial step and it's definitely going to help you to reduce much as possible air bubbles in your epoxy 
Casting our epoxy, there's nothing really that changed in the step, although we did found a few new methods and ways in reducing air bubbles, which I'm going to show you in the steps to follow. As you can see, and this is a current battle in the epoxy world, is whether to seal your live edges or not. Now for me, logically, if you think about it, we don't want to seal our edges. We want the epoxy to penetrate into the wood. We want the wood to soak up the epoxy. And this is something we strongly believe in. And I know there's so many manufacturers out there that is doing the same step. And it just makes logical sense in not sealing your edges. And this is also one of the reasons we're using a deep casting epoxy is because we got more working time with the epoxy. So once we cast our epoxy, we can leave it for around about 18 hours and it will basically give the air bubbles enough time to rise up and you can pop it. The next step, as you can see, I'm busy tapping the epoxy is this is called basically when the epoxy becomes tacky then we would come and do our next casting of the epoxy and the way we done it previously as you'll see in the main video we will cast our first layer of epoxy we will wait for it to dry then we will come and sand those epoxy to basically scuff it up to give the next layer of epoxy we're going to cast to bond to that layer but it obviously makes sense. Leave your epoxy so it becomes tacky, like sticky toffee. And then we would come and cast our next layer of epoxy. This will give those two epoxy bonds to be the most strongest you will possibly found. So this is a new method we found and it's really working. Um, if you're going to sand in between layers, it will still work. And that's how we started off manufacturing uh, epoxy tables. But it's quite a process. Sanding, cleaning, sanding, cleaning, sanding, cleaning all the time. And you have to make sure that you remove all those dust particles. The next step is something we are still currently using to today. Is before we're going to cast our epoxy. We will place it in a big drum. We will warm the drum up to heat up the epoxy slightly. And this will help the epoxy to become more in a liquid form. And this helps most of the air bubbles to come out. And we also recently did invest in a vacuum chamber that removes all the air bubbles from your epoxy. So we get so many requests from all our viewers and people that's asking us exactly how to build these tables. So we took the liberty in making an online epoxy masterclass going into detail on how we manufacture all our tables. Check out this small little clip. We've been building epoxy tables for many years now and we are finally going to share all our methods and techniques with you. My name is Greg and I am going to show you how to build the perfect epoxy table. I'm going to show you all the tools you need, exactly how to use them and show you some tips and tricks down the line. Everyone thinks you need to cast your second layer of epoxy once your first layer has set. That's not true. You need to cast your second layer of epoxy once your first layer has become tacky. This masterclass has been designed for all woodworkers, from your beginner all the way up to your experts. Click on this video or in the description down below for more information. So we designed this course for all woodworkers that's going to help you to manufacture epoxy tables successfully. It's going to help you in not making any mistakes. I'm literally going to show you all the tools you need. I'm going to show you how to use them. I'm going to show you all our methods from start to finish how to build epoxy tables successfully. I am going to leave a link down in the description where you can find this course. Now for the competition we are going to give away five of these masterclasses 
and how can you apply for the competition obviously you have to be subscribed to the channel you have to like this video and you have to comment down in the comment section below that you have done so and then in the next two to three weeks we're going to choose the winners and the five lucky winners we will announce on our instagram and you do want to go and follow us to make sure you are not going to miss out if you are going to be the winner good luck to all and hopefully you will be one of the winners also do remember that we are busy with a new website and once the website is live within the next two to three weeks the course the price for the course are gonna go up it's gonna double in price so make sure if you are not a winner that you go and check it out and make sure you purchase the course before the prices go up the next step in our project is we will leave our epoxy table once the casting is done for around about seven to ten days to give the epoxy sufficient time to dry you don't want to take it out of the mold uh, when the epoxy is not set so once the epoxy is set we're going to remove the table from our mold and this is where you'll see the ram wax works perfectly after our epoxy is set we previously we manually flatten our table on a router sled but this took way too much time and we just send it in to a cnc supplier which flattens our tables on top and at the bottom previously with the sanding process we will start with our belt sander but then we moved to the rotex from festool now the rotex from festool has got two different settings it's got the rotex setting which is a like a belt sander but not as strong as a belt sander and as you can see as time passed we invested in much better equipment that made our life very easy by just investing in the correct equipment for the job previously we sanded our edges down with a belt sander but we recently invested in this small little edge sander from festool and i do have to say till today it's one of my favorite tools in my shop and it's going to give you the perfect 90 degree edge once you're going to sand so fastening our steel bases to the underside of our epoxy table this is a question we also get a lot and please do not use self-tapping screws it's a super cheap and easy way to do it you want to give the client what they paid for and we are using a method um, using threaded inserts this is a much better way in fastening your bases to your wooden top first we will drill a hole that's this, the length of the threaded insert. Once we finish drilling our hole, we will come with a countersink bit to make sure once we're going to insert our threaded insert that it's going to sit flush with the table. Then we're going to add our threaded insert to the table and we're using M8 bolts with very thick washers to fasten our bases to our top. This is literally the best way you can fasten any steel base to the underside of your tables another important tip i want to share with you guys i didn't mention at the start is the most crucial part in your epoxy table build is to make sure that the wood moisture in your slab is under 11 percent it's quite crucial now i know for a lot of suppliers that's doing the threaded inserts they do apply a little bit of epoxy before they fastening the insert but we found that it's not really necessary because we apply a lot of these threaded inserts and I can promise you your steel base is not going to go anywhere. So this is literally the best way you can fasten your steel base. So the next step is by giving our table a small 45 degree chamfer and we previously used the makita machine but we recently invested in the palm router from festool and i do have to say that this is a very user-friendly machine and we like giving our tables a very small 45 degree chamfer to keep the thickness of the table the next step is also something we are still using to today and that is by closing all the small little cracks and holes and small and all the small little imperfections on your table because you want to give the client what they paid for 
and by doing this is applying a thin layer of epoxy over the complete surface and the way we've done it before is we will use the same color that we costed the epoxy in our table but we found that it's not making any difference so we will just use a clear epoxy for this step and the epoxy we're using for this is not the same epoxy as we used to cast the table. This epoxy is designed to set much faster. Uh, it's the epoxy we used way back when we started building tables. It sets basically in a matter of four to six hours. But we will leave the table for round about two days before we come back and sand it down. Now this step is quite a funny step when I look back at how we wanted to achieve the smoky finish on our tables and this is the scorch pad you get from ODs by applying the oil and the pad that comes with your sanding machine is quite a hard pad and to achieve the smoky finish we're only going to sand to 400 grit sandpaper so once we are done with 400 grit sandpaper my logical sense was that the pad for the sander is quite hard and that makes the shrill marks on your table. And my logical sense behind this was I need to design something that's a little bit more softer, like a sponge type of effect. And this is where I don't know what I thought here, but I designed something that gave me a much more smoother surface. At the time it did work. But Festool actually reached out to us and they told us, hey, we've got a scorch pad that's specifically designed for this. It's going to give you a softer, smoother finish on your epoxy. Because once you're going to start using transparent colors, it's going to punish you. And once you are going to use black, you are literally going to see any imperfection on your table. You're going to see the marks from the sander. You're going to see lines. Uh, you're going to see shrill marks and this is a very crucial step and a massive tip i'm going to share with you guys is invest in the scorch pads from festool i think they got seven or eight in the range we're using the green ones i think it's similar to 360 grit next step in our project is a new method we found in by basically cleaning our table and the way we used to do it before is we will wipe our table down with a wet cloth. Then we will come with our polish machine on a low RPM and a scorch pad from Rubio Monocoat. This is basically to give it that last frost smoky finish. But the way we're currently doing it now is we would stop sanding with our scorch pad from Festool. We will wipe our table down with a damp cloth. Then we will come with our polish machine with a sheep wool buff. This is just to remove the last dust particles from your table before we're going to move to the oiling process. And I do have to say this actually works. This works perfectly. The sheep wool buff is going to even your surface and it's going to remove all the lines uh, that you made with your damp cloth. This actually works. The next step is something we are still using to today. And that's applying Odis oil to our tables. And the reason we like using Odis oil is we can sand to any grit our heart desires. So we can sand our wood and our epoxy section to whatever grit we want. So for the smoky finish, we obviously sanded our wood and our epoxy down to 400 grit. And then we're going to start applying the Odis oil super duper. Now the Odis oil super duper is a little bit more liquid oil than your original Odis oil. Now I believe that by starting with this step, it's giving the oil enough time to penetrate into the wood. And then we will wait one hour, we'll come and buff it off, then we'll come back the next day and we will apply the original Odis oil. And as you can see the way we previously done it is we will apply the oil by hand which is nothing wrong with it but the current way we are doing it is we will use a very old sander and we will put it on a low rpm and the reason for this is the vibration of the machine basically massages the oil into the wood i absolutely love this step and your hand and your fingers are not gonna get tired 
So one thing I also like about using Odis oil is it's got so many applications. You can literally use it for indoor furniture. You can use it for outdoor furniture. You can use it for leather products and it's got the food degradable aspect in it. If you want to build, say, chopping boards where you're going to cut food on, it's also built for that. Everything in one small little bottle. So that's why we like using Odis oil. So before I'm going to leave you guys with the final product, make sure you hit the notification button so you don't miss out on any future content and projects we are posting. Make sure you like this video, make sure you support us by subscribing to the channel and leave me a comment down below. What do you think of this build and did you learn something new today? I would love to interact with you guys. So thank you for watching this week's episode. I'll see you next week with another super cool video. Thanks guys. Cheers.